Wanderer Fly Melbourne. I'm one of the instructors here and my name is Clement. Today we're going to talk about advanced stalling. The definition of advanced stalling is the aircraft will be stalling in a more dynamic and advanced phase of flight. The recovery technique will be slightly different than a normal stall recovery. If the recovery technique is not carried out properly, it could adversely impact the safety of the flight. Before we dive into the advanced stalls, let's have a quick revision on the six symptoms of a normal stall. Firstly, as the aircraft is approaching a stall, the nose attitude will gradually rise. Secondly, airspeed will decrease. As the airspeed drops, the responsiveness of control will decrease as well. Stall warning will go off to warn the pilot that a stall is imminent. The control will be buffeting as more and more turbulence is created by the wing. Lastly, the control position will be quite upped. And those are the six symptoms of the stall. As the aircraft stalls, the nose attitude will pitch down involuntarily and lose altitude. If the aircraft is out of balance during a stall, it will be more prone to wing drop. Wing drop occurs when one of the wings stalls before the other wing, causing the entire aircraft to roll towards the stalled wing. If the rolling moment is not corrected right away, it will lead to more yaw and more roll, eventually leading to a fully developed spin. In this lesson, we will talk about how to avoid getting into a spin. Firstly, we will look into why a wing would stall before the other. When the angle of attack exceeds 16 degrees, the wing would stall. When one of the wing's angle of attack exceeds 16 degrees before the other wing, wing drop would occur. The application of ailerons contributes to the imbalance of angle of attack across the wings. When ailerons is used, it changes the core line of the aerofoil. As the court line changes position, the angle of attack of the wing would be affected accordingly. When the aircraft stalls due to unstable air, the aircraft may bank towards one side. At this point, do not use aileron in an attempt to pick up the downgoing wing, but only use rudder to prevent further roll and yaw. When practicing advanced stalls in flight, there are some precautionary checks to be done beforehand. These are the pre-maneuver checks. Hassle check. H A S E L L. Height. Recover from the stall by 3,000 feet above ground level. Airframe. Ensure the airframe is not damaged. Security. Ensure the hatches are closed and locked. Seat belt are tightly fastened. And heavy item has been stowed securely. Engine. Check the oil temperature and pressure is in the green range. Location. Only conduct stores about a non-populated area. Lookout. Conduct a 360 degree medium level turn lookout to ensure the surrounding airspace is clear of other traffic and obstacles. The first stall that we'll be practicing is the approach stall. Because in the approach configuration, there will be a higher chance for a wing drop to occur naturally. I have to emphasize that when conducting an approach stall, we're not purposely putting the aircraft in a wing drop situation, but only practicing the recovery from wing drop when it happens. When a wing drop happens during a stall, the recovery technique can be slightly different than a normal straight and level stall. Firstly, due to the wing drop, the aircraft will be rolling and yawing towards the downgoing wing. Hence, the first step of recovery from wing drop is to apply the opposite rudder. As the aircraft is rolling and yawing to the left, apply the right rudder will prevent any more yaw and roll. Secondly, release the back pressure and simultaneously apply full power. By releasing the back pressure, we are allowing the aircraft to pitch down to about a straight and level attitude. At this point, the aircraft will be unstalled, and aileron can now be used to roll the wings level. As the wings are leveling, apply back pressure to pitch the nose attitude up to a climb attitude and start to climb to the initial altitude and then level off. Like I've mentioned earlier, if a wing drop didn't happen, please use the normal recovery technique to recover from a straight and level stall. But never apply pro spin or pro wing drop technique to deliberately enter a spin, unless you've received adequate training on spin recovery and you're in a spin certified aircraft. The second advanced stall to talk about is the steep turn stall. The reason why we're talking about this is because during a turn, stall speed increases, and at the same time, our airspeed decreases due to additional drag. 
If the airspeed decreases to the stall speed, the aircraft stalls. By practicing steep turn stall, we'll have a look into the symptoms and recognize the stall is developing and recover before it happens. To practice steep turn stall in the air, firstly, reduce power to 12 inches of metal pressure. At the same time, start to bank the aircraft to 45 degrees. As the aircraft is turning, apply more back pressure to gradually maintain altitude. Because of the lack of power and the increase in drag, speed will be washing off rapidly. Also, during a steep turn, stall speed increases. When the speed of the aircraft reduces to the stall speed, the aircraft will stall during the steep turn. When the aircraft stall, it will pitch down and descend rapidly. To recover, firstly, reduce the back pressure. At the same time, apply full power. When the aircraft has installed, use ailerons to roll the wings level. As the aircraft regains normal attitude, start to apply more back pressure to raise the nose to a climbing attitude to get back to the initial altitude at the start of the exercise. The third advanced stall to talk about is the power on stall. This exercise is to simulate when the aircraft has an excessive pitch up attitude right after rotation in the initial climb out phase and to practice the method of recovery. To enter a power on stall, firstly, reduce power to idle like a normal strain level stall. As the stall wing goes off, apply full power at the same time apply back pressure on the control to raise the nose attitude to increase the angle of attack. What you would see is the nose attitude of the aircraft is much higher than a normal idle stall. When the aircraft's angle of attack exceeds 16 degrees, it will stall. And when that happens, the nose will pitch down involuntarily. The recovery procedure is to maintain full power but simultaneously reduce back pressure to allow the nose to pitch down to five fingers attitude. When the aircraft has unstalled, raise the nose again to a normal climb out attitude to the original altitude. Before we start practicing stalls, we have to complete the pre-maneuver checks first to ensure everything is normal and safe. The pre medieval check is the hassle check. H, height. We have to recover by 3,000 feet. We are currently at 5,500 feet, so that's more than enough to recover. A, airframe. We're going to do a clean idle stall, so it won't be extending flaps. Also, I can't spot any defect on the wing or the airframe, so we can proceed. S, security. Ensure all heavy items have been stowed securely in the designated compartments. Hatches locked and seatbelt fastened. Engine, T's and P's in the green out location. We have to ensure we're over an open and unpopulated area. I will now start a left hand turn, right, center, center, left. To look for a farmland or unpopulated area to conduct stores. You can see the area in front of us is pretty unpopulated. That's why I will be heading towards that direction to conduct the stores. Because we're going to do stores over that way, I'll buck the heading buck here to start our 360 degree lookout. After ensuring no other traffic surrounds us, we can level off at here and start our first store. The first advanced store to demonstrate is the approach store. We'll try to demonstrate a wing drop recovery if it happens. First of all, set heading, we're currently flying towards the north, altitude 5,500 feet. Set approach power setting. 11 inches of metal pressure. Speed check, flap down, take off flap. Speed check, flap down, landing flap. Speed check, flap down, landing flap. The initial phase of the store is the same as a normal approach store. You can see the usual symptoms, speed is dropping, the nose is getting higher, control effectiveness is reducing, and you'll be hearing the stalling, stalling, full pitch. Control effectiveness reducing, control buffet, use rudder for directional control. If there's a wing drop, use opposite rudder. Right rudder, release back pressure, full power. Roll the wings level after install and raise the nose. Positive rate, flap up one stage at a time. Still positive rate, flap up and getting back to 5,500 feet. 
If you look at the heading, you can see we turned 20 to 30 degrees during the wing drop. Because we dropped to the left, so we need right rudder at the same time release back pressure. Level off at 5,500 feet and proceed with normal cruise. And that is a wing drop recovery demonstration. After completing a store, we have to conduct a simplified hassle check, which is the hell check. Height, engine, location, lookout. Height, 5,500 feet. Engine, T's and P's in the green. Location, over on populated area, lookout. At this time, we'd have to turn a full 360, but only a 9 degree would be enough. A 90 degree turn is recommended between each stores to ensure we have enough spacing with other traffic. After completing the hell check, if you're happy with the area, then we can proceed with the second store. The second store to show you guys is a steep turn store. Due to safety reason, we're not actually going to store the aircraft. We'll recover at a st on of the store warning. The reason why we practice steep turn store is to simulate when conducting a steep turn, if power is not increased, the aircraft may store during the steep turn and we'll have to recover before it actually stores. The recovery technique is similar to a normal store. It's just that the aircraft will be in the bank. To recover, release back pressure and apply full power. When the aircraft is unstored, use aileron to roll wings level and slowly pull up to trend level or initiate a climb back to the original altitude. I will now demonstrate a left steep turn store. Firstly, before we start turning, we have to look out right, center, center, left. Power reduced to 12 inches of manifold pressure to simulate we didn't add enough power. Start turning to the left to a 40 degree angle of fang steep turn. You'll realize the speed will be dropping quite quickly because of insufficient power. Therefore, we have to pull back more than a normal steep turn to raise the nose attitude to maintain altitude. When a stall warning goes off, full pitch, full power, release back pressure, unstall the aircraft and use aileron to row wings level. Use rudder to maintain balance. Slowly raise the nose. And climb back to 5,500 feet. Set normal power setting. And this is a steep turn store demonstration. We'll now demonstrate a power on climbing store. This is to simulate the aircraft stores right after takeoff. When the nose attitude is excessively high. The recovery technique is similar to a normal procedure, most importantly reducing the back pressure to lower the nose attitude. In the entry phase, reduce power to 11 inches, maintain altitude, look out for other traffic, including on top of us because we will be climbing during the stall. Full power, raise the nose. Maintain balance of rudder. Store, load the nose. Right rudder to maintain directional control. And that is a climbing store. We'll now set normal cruise power setting. Normal cruise. It is now time for the threat and error management. In this lesson, advanced stalling, what are some of the threats and error that we have to look out for? The first threat for this lesson is the potential wing drop that can lead to an excessively low nose attitude during stall. When that happens, use the recovery technique that we have mentioned earlier and raise the nose back to the normal attitude. However, during the process of raising the nose to the normal attitude, it can't be done too quickly. Otherwise, the forces may overstress the airframe and causes irreversible damage. The next threat to cover is a secondary stall. It is more common on the power on stall. What a secondary stall is, if the initial stall recovery was not completely recovered, such as the nose is not low enough, a stall could occur right after the initial recovery. And the secondary stall can develop into an even steeper stall, which results in more height loss. The way to manage this is to ensure the recovery nose attitude is 5 to 6 fingers low. And that is it for today guys, 
Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to Learn to Fly YouTube channel for more great content and follow us on social media such as Instagram and Facebook. I will see you guys next time. Cheers.